Welcome, welcome to another piano lesson. My name is Warren McPherson. If you're just joining me, just discovering the channel, this is the channel that we talk about playing by ear and playing gospel piano. Gospel piano has to do with CCM, old school gospel, new school gospel. If you want to be able to improve your playing by ear and you want to get better at playing gospel music, this is the best channel to be. We discuss everything from theory to ear training to passing chords to song breakdowns, just a wide variety of stuff. So if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, hit that subscribe button so you can be notified every week, Wednesdays, when I post new video content. Now in today's lesson, we're going to talk about ear training the importance of ear training because if you want to be able to play by ear ear training needs to be at the center of what you're doing now one of the techniques that has helped me over the years to improve my ear training is the concept of solfege or solfeggio and so in this video i'm just going to break down give you a quick background on what solfeggio is and how to use it to improve your ear training because if you're not doing ear training then the simple fact is that you'll never be able to get better at playing by ear. Playing by ear also equals working on ear training activity and solfege can be a great tool to help you with that. So stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. So, solfege or solfeggio. You'll often hear them, those two words used interchange, interchangeably, but they're basically talking about the same thing. And it means it's a musical education method used to teach oral skills, pitch, sight reading in Western music. So all the Western part of the world, this is the sort of the method we used for teaching ear training, sight reading, um, sight singing. And in my opinion, it is a very effective method. I studied music in university, in college, and that's where I was introduced to solfeggio. And I quickly jumped on board, started to learn it, and started to try to understand it. And it really helped me immensely with my ear training. Now, the whole notion of solfeggio is to attach sort of syllables to the different degrees of the scale to help with memorization. So instead of just doing... So instead of just doing the scales like that, we're just doing it to a bunch of la's, every note in the scale has a specific sort of syllable. So we use do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. And those are the solfege notes for the major key. Now we have solfege for the chromatic scale, which is a whole nother thing that I will not get into. Let's just focus on the major scale for now. Because if you can get your solfege on the major scales, then you would have come a long way in beginning to associate these syllables with different pitch. Right? So those are the solfege notes for the major scale. We call the first degree of the scale Do, the second degree Re, the third degree Mi, the fourth degree Fa, the fifth degree Sol. Sometimes you hear people just say So, but it's really Sol. Then the sixth degree La, and the seventh degree T. And so it's very important to associate the sound of each of these notes to these uh, syllables. The position of each pitch in the scale has a different sound. Do, re. And so you start to try to create those association with what it sounds like moving from a do to a re. What it sounds like moving from a do to a mi. What does it sound like moving from a mi to a sol? Mi, sol. What does it sound like from a so to a t? So, t. Or re. 
our soul, our me or la. And so if you can start to just practice it just as how I do it right now, sit around your keyboard, just use whatever key is more comfortable for you. I'm using the key of C. Play one note and then try to see if you can sing another note within the scale to solfege. And the minute I start to practice this association, then I can clearly start to hear the different pitches in my head. If I'm on la, I can hear re, re. I can hear t, t. I can hear fa, mi. You know, I start to hear the different notes. Now, I'm not saying this is something that in three days you're going to be able to do. But I found if I were to practice this without solfege, it would be a lot harder. I mean, now my ears is a, is a lot more advanced. I can do it without solfege. But when I was just starting out, the solfege system, for some reason, just being able to associate a different syllable for each position in the scale helped my memorization. And so if this is not something you've been practicing, I urge you to start working on it. Now let's jump on to something else. Remember earlier I talked about that solfeggio is a music education system used in the Western world to teach uh, sight singing and oral skills, oral skills. There is another form of solfeggio. And now we get into what's known as the fixed dough versus the movable dough system. In some parts of the world, they teach fixed dough. In the Western world, or at least I've went to two different colleges for music, we teach the movable dough. And let me explain to you what that means. Remember, I was talking about the key of C. And I say that C is dough. D is re. E is me, F is fa, G is sol, A is la, and B is T, back to C, do. Now there's a system that is called fixed do, and let me just preface by saying, I think fixed do is not very effective. I wouldn't recommend anyone to learn it. Now that's just my personal point of view. Having studied music for well over a decade, I don't see from a practical standpoint how the fixed dose system makes sense. And so what that means is when you're in a new key, for example, if I move to the key of G, fixed dose teaches that G is still sol. A is still uh, la. B is still T. Now, think of how that is confusing. If you've been practicing to associate these syllables to a particular pitch relationship in the key, we're associating pitch, the way this pitch sounds within the scale, to a particular syllable. Now, when you change key, if you bring that same solfege, fix those system to the new key, it's going to throw off that sort of memory that you have. Because if I'm in the key of, 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 of G, this B in the key of C would be T. But in the key of G, it's still giving you the sound of me, the third degree of the scale. So if fixed Do says that the syllables doesn't change. It is attached to the key itself. C will always be Do, regardless of which key you're in. You're in the key of G. It's still calling C Do. But to your mind, you're hearing so. You see why fixed Do is confusing, which is why I don't know of anywhere in the Western world where fixed Do system is taught. But there are other places around the world that I've heard that fix those system is actually a thing. How this even became a thing, I cannot understand. You see, for a guy like me, I rely on memory. 
I have a pretty good memory. I memorize things. And so if I memorize something incorrectly, it is extremely difficult for me to go and change that. So for me now, when I start learning to memorize the keys based on their position within the scale and still fetch attached to them, doesn't matter what key you're in, that's how I hear them. And this is where movable dough comes in, which is the method most institution teaches in the Western world. Do is always going to be the first degree of the scale. Doesn't matter what key you're in. It is not key specific. So if I'm in the key of A flat, A flat is Do, B flat is Re, C is Mi, D flat is uh, Fa, E flat is Sol, F is La, G is T, back to A flat, Do. And so this way, the solfege will always sound the same way in your mind. So I can go, do, ah, do. I can go, la. I know that's the sixth degree of the scale. So that's the fifth degree of the scale. Re. That's the second degree of the scale. Do. So. And that's how I've been practicing ear training to be able to identify the different degrees of the scale simply by using um, what we call association. All I need is one note of the scale and then I can find remaining notes. And this is something you should be practicing. Just take a few minutes each day, pick a key, you know, uh, um, give yourself the key center by either playing through the scale or just playing a cadence. So you can establish what we call that key center. Do. You know where Do is. And then from there, just practice trying to find other notes within the scale by singing them and playing them. Now, once you start to be able to identify the different pitches of the scale, this is now how you can start to identify bass line so you can start figuring out chord progressions. And I have an entire course on how to use the idea of solfeggio and pitch recognition to understand baseline movements and to understand chord quality. It's all about what I call deductive reasoning, where if you have X, you can solve the equation to find Y. You know, and it's, it's not as complex as algebra, but it's based on the same concept, building up on the concept of solfeggio and pitch association. And that's all I use. Many of you guys have seen the breakdown that I've done on Yuan, Johan Kim's tutorial. And people are saying, man, how you do that? You have golden ears and man, I'll never be able to get to that level. No, 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 no. It, it's quite possible for any of you guys to be able to do it. Yes, it is advanced, but once you have all the tools at your disposal, it's just a matter of deductive reasoning and association to figure out what's going on. It takes time, but there's definitely a clear path for any of you to be able to have really good relative pitch. Developing really good rel relative pitch is not impossible. Now, I think I've done a video before on the concept of perfect pitch versus relative pitch. Most people only need to aspire to relative pitch. It is my belief that perfect pitch cannot be taught. You're born with it. That's just my belief. I have not met any person who have successfully taught themselves perfect pitch. Some people have such good relative pitch that they're basically borderline perfect pitch. 
And in that case, by just nudging themselves with some serious practice, they were able to get themselves over into perfect pitch territory. But for a guy like me, I know it's not possible for me to develop perfect pitch, which is fine because you don't need perfect pitch to be a really good musician. All you need is a good sense of relative pitch and relative pitch can be developed by anyone. That's my belief. And over the years of studying music and studying ear training, I think I have a method that I've worked out to help people to progress through their ear training. And it all starts on building on the foundation of understanding your solfeggio. So the exercise that I demonstrate in this video is very helpful for whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or intermediate advanced to start working on your ear training. So that's all I have for you guys today on solfeggio. Now, if you want to go deeper into how you can take this solfege system and how do you work on it, how do you build on it to get you to be able to understanding and hearing baseline, understanding and hearing chords and chord movements, my ear training course would be perfect for you. Over at PianoLessonWithWarren.com, I have an ear training that is more geared towards beginners and intermediates. That course gives you all the tools necessary for you to then go and work on your ears. Because the concept of ear training might seem like this elusive thing that only some people have or some people don't, but all you need is direction and guidance on how to listen and what to listen for. And then once you have that, then it's just a matter of you putting in the time and the work to practice. If you can recognize a goat without seeing it, if you can recognize a cow, if you can recognize a car versus a bus versus a truck, if you can hear all these things already, that means your ear is not broken. It's just that no one taught you how to listen and what to listen for when it comes to music. And this course does a good job on teaching you all of that. And it all builds on the foundation of understanding the movable dough fixed system. All right. So thanks again, guys, for watching. As always, every Wednesday we have new tutorials coming out. So hit that subscribe button, the like button, and remember to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I put out more video content. All right. And if you haven't gone over to check out Piano Lesson with Warren yet, I'm telling you, the information over there you will not find on YouTube. The cohesive and step-by-step -step guidance that I provide over there, you're not going to find it on YouTube. So just head over there, check it out. Let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, I can be found on multiple places. You can email me directly from the website on the contact page. You can leave a comment here on YouTube. I re respond to every comment. Doesn't matter how old the video is. You can bet if you leave a comment, I'll get back to you. And I'm also on all the different social platforms. The ones I mostly frequent are Facebook, Instagram, along with YouTube. I am also on Twitter. Don't do much over there. But shoot me a, a message on Twitter, uh, uh, Facebook or Instagram here on YouTube on the website. Many of you already have my email address. All right. Let's connect. Let's talk. Let's get you playing and let's get you hearing. So until then, keep listening. Keep singing and keep practicing, and I'll catch you next week for another tutorial. Have a blessed weekend.